pieces of tissue paper, putting it on the ground in staircases. Uh, and we, we just pray regularly over there. Sometimes it's just one of us, sometimes it's three of us, sometimes it's five of us. It's just been unbelievable. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is, what does it feel like to be a Muslim in the United States? Today, I'll be breaking it down into three categories. Number one, getting into and out of the United States. Number two, life on the Purdue campus as a Muslim. And number three, my interactions with other people as a Muslim. So stay tuned. Well, let's get started with the first one, getting into and out of the United States. Many people I know have an indescribable fear of traveling and the US Immigration and Customs as a whole, whether it's the canine dogs or the advanced machines and technology that they use to scam people and search people something just doesn't make people feel excited about it and from my personal experience that's unnecessary perfect example of that would be when my family and i first got to the united states for our very very first visit we were standing in line for an additional baggage or luggage search when we were suddenly approached by an officer this officer asked us to follow him uh, away from the line and before i continue the story keep in mind that my mom was the only person wearing a hijab at that time in the whole line and even in that whole, the whole area of the airport. So our first instincts were like, oh, something's wrong, we should be worried, whatever. So we followed him and it turns out that all he wanted to do was just help us skip the line because he said, you guys don't need to stand there. Keep in mind that those who still stood in that line were all Americans. They were all non-Muslims. Some of them were even elderly people. And I saw a really old woman and they told her, stop right there, we need to check her bag. So, just keep in mind that they don't perform additional screenings or additional searches unless they have a reason to, unless you've been acting suspicious, unless you're acting like you have something to hide. So as long as you're acting normally, like you've got nothing to hide, as long as you're following orders, as long as you're following signs, you're not doing anything weird, no one's gonna stop you. I've traveled plenty of times on my own, internationally and domestically. And I've been through similar situations where people allowed me to, you know, take shortcuts or avoid doing this or doing that because I was just natural. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to cause any suspicion. So just make sure that you keep in mind that the officer's job is to keep the country safe, not to get you worried and annoyed. He has no interest in doing that. That's not something he's getting paid to do. He's getting paid to make sure that security, like the airport is safe and the country is safe. So keep that in mind and make sure you relax next time you travel. On to the second point, which is life of a Muslim on the Purdue campus. Now, one of the great things about Purdue is that they help you feel at home and, and welcome no matter where you're from and no matter what background you come from. One of the main things they try to do here is to encourage you to celebrate your culture, your religion, your backgrounds, whatever it is, the way you would celebrate it back home, basically. So as a student in the United States, I feel super privileged and super fortunate to have a mosque on campus. Now, this mosque is almost like the mosques back home. We have our daily five or the five daily prayers. We have our Friday prayer. Um, things run pretty smoothly over here. So I, I would say the people who are in charge are doing a great job at this. The way it works is that we have graduate students, we have faculty members, and even sometimes community members who contribute and take turns uh, to lead those prayers and, and to uh, lead the Friday prayer. I think the basic requirement is basically having an adequate understanding and knowledge of the Quran. So just to show you how diverse our campus is, the mosque itself is surrounded by fraternities on one side and then by residence hall on the other side and then down a few blocks there's a church. So it just shows you that people are free to do whatever they want as long as they respect the limits and borders of others. And I think this is a great way to do things because Purdue, Purdue has a, a 44,000 student campus. That's just huge and you got people from everywhere. So you can't restrict people to just doing one thing and at the same time if everyone's just doing like absolutely whatever they want it'll be a mess. But over here everyone is happy with, with the way things are run and, and I think it's just a great atmosphere overall. Unfortunately the mosque is closer to the residential side of, of the campus than it is to the classes. So it's really hard for me and my, my friends to go to the mosque every single time we want to pray. The only alternative we have is to pray in the staircases. Now it sounds weird obviously because back home prayer rooms tend to be literally everywhere different parts of malls and buildings and everything but you know over here that's not possible so what we ended up doing is getting pieces of tissue paper putting it on the ground in staircases and when i say staircase it's either the highest floor the top level or the bottom most we don't want to be in between where chances are there are a lot of people using it and we, we just pray regularly over there sometimes it's just one of us sometimes it's three of us sometimes it's five of us and the best part is the following when we pray in the staircases Every now and then, there are people who actually use those staircases to, to go from one floor to another, you know, just like regular people who use staircases. But the thing is, when they see us praying, whether or not they know what's happening, and I love this, 
they automatically just lower their voices and sometimes they just stop talking and they move around in such a respectful and quiet way which just really means a lot to me as, as, as someone who's praying. I just want to say, when I say I'm praying in the staircase and this, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to, to show off or say, hey, look at me. No, I'm, I'm just saying the reality of this as, as just a Muslim who's, who's trying his best to be, meet the bare minimum standards of, of just following religion. Like when I'm saying this, I don't want you guys to think that, oh, look at him, he's showing up. Please, I, I'm, just, I'm just trying my best to stay on, on the right track. Anyway, back to the main story. So when we're praying in those staircases and, and people are passing by, you know, you sometimes, you know, if, if we think, oh, the, the, you know, Muslims are hated or whatever, they probably make fun of us or they probably hurt us because we're busy praying and we're not focused on them. And none of that has ever happened. We've had literally, I would say, hundreds of prayers in those staircases and not once did anyone interrupt us or stop us and say, hey, what are you doing here? Or this is weird. None of that. So it's just been unbelievable the amount of respect we get, even from people we don't know or people sometimes we never even see again. Because when you're praying, you don't see who's passing by. So it's just... It, I, I'm just, my mind is blown by, by the amount of respect we get. So if you're concerned about that, you shouldn't be. And finally, number three is life as a student with other people, interacting with other people. And I think this first starts with roommates. I personally decide to go with random roommates every single year. I have my own reasons. You can ask me about that in private. That's fine. But this was the first year that I got a Muslim roommate. And again, it was by chance. For the past three years, I've had non-Muslim roommates. And after I talked to them, all of them never had a Muslim roommate before. And most of them have never really interacted and talked to someone who's Muslim. So it was a huge change for them to be living with someone like me. And I think the biggest part of that is, number one, the Fajr prayer. For those who don't know what that is, that's the prayer that we have to wake up every day for at 5 or 6 a.m. So I would say, the biggest thing is when I have to approach them, you know, on the first day and be like, hey man, I just want to let you know that I'm going to have to set an alarm to wake me up for my prayer that's going to be at around 5 or 6 a.m. I'm just going to, I just want to make sure that's cool with you. And not once, not once did one of the roommates say, man, no, I, I need to sleep or I'm light, I'm a light sleeper. And, and I would say all of them were light sleepers. I don't, I don't know how that happened. All of them were light sleepers, but none of them objected to me waking up early or setting an alarm to wake up early for that prayer. And I have so much respect for these guys. The other thing is, you know, when I'm in my room during the weekends or during the day, when I happen to come back and pray in my room, the fact that all of my roommates, when they see me pray and set up the carpet, they just stop doing whatever they're doing or like really make sure that there's no noise in the whole room. They don't move around much. They don't cause any commotion. If they need to leave for a class or something, they never pass in front of me. I obviously try to be conscious about that and pray like towards a corner and not leave the space in front of me. But, you know, sometimes depending on the room configuration or whatever, there is a chance that he could think of passing in front of me. And it's just, it blows my mind how he doesn't even think about it. He just automatically crosses behind me. Just the amount of respect, again, that people on campus and people I've lived with. And just keep in mind, all of these are people are strangers. You never know what they could have heard or seen in the media. So it just means so much when someone like that you've never met before possibly could have heard bad things about you or about your religion or about your background or your country or whatever it is. And for him to just treat you with, with that level of respect, it literally blows me away. I can't even describe it to you guys. I wanted to add this part because I think it's a really, really big part about living in, in abroad in a, in a country like this where Muslims are a minority and it's the topic of people who misrepresent Islam and I'm not talking about these people on TV and, and I don't and I don't even want to say the word and I don't want this on my channel anywhere but I'm talking about people who really tarnish the reputation of our religion because of what they do so let me give you an example one of the worst things I've ever experienced was when someone would ask me hey like why don't you drink or why don't you do this or why do you do that my answer is simply my my religion forbids me from doing that or it's forbidden you know according to the quran according to the sunnah you know to do such things and then they'd look at me like huh interesting well it's funny you say that because um my friend I, I knew back in high school or someone i met a few days ago in this major he isn't muslim as well and, and he was perfectly fine drinking and doing this and doing that and then i'm in a situation where i'm torn like i don't want to tell him you have a bad friend or you met someone who's not a true muslim i don't i never say that and then the same guy, at the same time, sorry, the guy or the girl or whoever it is, they look at me and, and they're confused, like, who's doing the right thing? Am I doing the right thing or is their other friend doing the right thing? And I just want to say, I'm not here to judge you as a Muslim. We all make mistakes. That's what I want to say. We all make mistakes. And it's completely natural for you to make mistakes. But try the best, like, put 
put the most amount of effort in not associating those mistakes and those things with the fact that they're allowed by your religion that's not. And it just makes it really hard for everyone, including myself, who's, who's trying his best you know, to fight and resist all the temptations. It's really hard for us to basically do that when, when you're doing your thing and, and you're just completely open and you're just like pretending like it's all good, it's not. And that's one of the main reasons I have respect, massive respect for anyone wearing the hijab in a Muslim, non-Muslim, Arab, non-Arab country. I think it's getting equally as hard. But the fact is, you guys have my utmost respect because you, you, you believe that it's not there to make you look ugly or less beautiful, not at all. You just believe in the true power of the hijab, the fact that you're just making your beauty exclusive to those who, who have the right to see it, just makes you beautiful in your own way. So respect to you. This is a message to everyone out there. Uh, I understand, I make mistakes. I'm not gonna claim and say that I haven't made mistakes while I'm here, I have. I've just tried my best possible to repent to God, make it just between me and Him. I'm not going around showing off that I did this or that. Uh, I'm not going around like taking, you know, pride in the fact that, hey, now I do this and it's against my religion, look at me. Just, I, I, I just kindly ask you not to do those kind of things because it's just not right. Number one and number two is just, for, for those of us who are trying our best and who are struggling, um, to just stay stay on track and just do the bare minimum. It's just it's just really hard when you do things like this So if you don't care, please at least help us who do so those were my three main categories uh, That I could think of as a Muslim and, and how I'm impacted by the people around me and how I impact others around me I'd love to hear your experiences as a Muslim in, in different areas of the world So make sure you leave that in the comment or even in the DMS uh, Let me know if there are other aspects that you would have liked me to cover or certain topics that you thought I was going to cover But I didn't I'd really appreciate that if you just let me know. And if you want to know how I was able to be successful, make sure you check the playlist down here uh, about the college success. These include a lot of videos about how I made it this far in my journey. I'll see you there. Peace.